if you're watching this video because you want to know more about the Nikon PB6 bellows or some of the nifty things you can do with bellows, you're in the right place. If on the other hand, you are a keen Riddler and the uh, title of the video uh, prompted you to think maybe there would be a fresh riddle about bellows, um, no, there won't be. I made that up entirely just so I could use that picture. So yeah, no riddles, but plenty of stuff about the PB6 bellows. What I'm gonna do today is cover all of those things that uh, I haven't talked about before. Maybe some of the stuff that we have talked about before, but I'm gonna fill in any blanks in the information. This is coming from a lot of the questions that I receive, um, as well as uh, just looking at the previous videos and noticing a few things that I forgot to mention. So it'll be kind of wrapping up the whole bellows thing. If there's anything else you still need to know about the bellows after this video, um, you'll have to go discover it yourself and then tell me about it. So before I start, thank you to my Patreon supporters and uh, anybody who makes a contribution through the website or does anything to support the, the uh, channel. I really appreciate your help. It would be well nigh impossible to do this without you. Now, I have a quick announcement to make. Since I started this channel two years ago, I have answered almost every email that has been sent to me. And uh, over the last year, it's been getting harder and harder to do that. Over the last two months, it has become impossible. Um, I'm gonna have to make a change. I discovered I was spending 70% of my work week in correspondence, which is fun and I love to do it. I love to answer your questions, but it is just not a good use of my time seeing as it's making my video production fall behind. So here's what I'm gonna do going forward. I'm still gonna read every email. If you ask me a question, I will either answer it with an email, not answer it, but address it during a monthly Q&A video that I'm gonna do in addition to my regular production schedule, or three, receive a link from me in an email that is gonna point you to the video and articles page of my website, which is now searchable. So all you have to do is type in the keywords that you're interested in and everything I've done on that subject should show up. If for any reason you still don't get the answer you're looking for, then contact me again. I hope that sounds reasonable to everybody. I think it's uh, the best thing I could come up with right now. If it doesn't work, I'll change it later, but for the time being, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. Let's talk bellows. So this wonderful piece of equipment is the Nikon PB6 bellows. Nikon made two other sets of bellows in roughly this same era uh, that I've used, uh, the PB4 and the PB5, which are interesting uh, bellows in their own rights, uh, especially the PB4, because the PB4 has the ability to tilt the front element or the front standard, I'm going to call it. I don't think it'll be any surprise to anybody who watches this channel regularly, but I think the PB6 bellows is the best set of bellows on the market. And the first thing I want to address is the people who will get in touch with me and say, why don't you talk about some other bellows that cannon shooters can use? That is one of the main reasons that I love this bellows so much is it's really brand agnostic. Sure, the bellows has an F mount on one end and an F mount on the other end. But the fact is that most of the time when I'm using bellows, I'm not even using a Nikon lens. It doesn't really matter. So long as you have a reversing ring or an adapter that will fit an F mount, and F mount is one of the most popular mounts in the world, you'll find the adapter you need. You can put any lens on the end of this, or for that matter, any objective, and as far as the camera goes, it's just a matter of getting that adapter as well. So no matter what kind of camera you shoot with, I think that uh, the best bellows for your money is still the Nikon PB6. Before I get into some of the features that we haven't discussed before, another common question I get is, I bought the, the 
bellows, but I can't use them because I shoot a D4 and my camera gets in the way, or I use a battery uh, grip and I can't mount it on the bellows. So if this part of your bellows is getting in the way of your camera, all you need to do is extend this distance. Just remember you've added that distance when you're calculating total distances. And you can do that with some extension tubes. Just take the first and the last piece, take all the extension out and put the ends together. And then you have a, a female F mount in this case, but you could, if you're using an adapter, that will give you added space. But uh, by, by putting the um, piece of extension tubes on and locking it in place like that, then all you have to do is, is add your camera in the usual way. If you do decide to use this technique for, for adding a little bit of extra space to put your camera on, remember that the two sections of the extension tube actually screw together. And what screws together will unscrew as well. Uh, also, the, uh, the bellows has a small button on the side which allows you to turn the collar now it locks 90 degrees apart. So it'll lock in this supposedly landscape position and also in that portrait position. But obviously it's not straight. So if you're using just extension tubes like this, all you really have to do is depress the little lever, turn the camera until it is in the orientation you want it, and then put a small piece of tape to prevent it from, uh, from turning. That's what I do. Uh, so that'll give you all the room you need to put any camera that you own underneath this. You could even use a slightly longer piece and put a medium format camera on it. So for a $5 adapter, you can use your Canon or your Fuji or your Sony with the best bellows in the world without having to do anything fancy. Now this device was designed to be used in the manner that we use it. So they went to great trouble to make sure that there's nothing reflective inside the bellows. For that reason, I generally speaking, don't flock the inside of my bellows. I trust the bellows. Light leak from either end is never a problem. I've never encountered that. Uh, this is my second set of PB6 bellows. I've never had a problem with it. Where you do get light leak is from perforations in the bellow itself. This is uh, not a permanent material. This is a, a mixture of cardboard and leather and a few other things uh, that allows it to be uh, stretchy like this, but it does have a lifetime. If it's looked after, it can last a long, long time. But if you use a bellows as often as I do, and you're opening and closing the bellows frequently in all kinds of different conditions of humidity and temperature, sometimes you will get pinholes appear in the folds. If your bellows springs a leak, like my last set of PB6 eventually did, all you have to do is fashion a tube I generally use self-adhesive flocking that is stuck to a piece of plastic sheeting that I use a heat gun to form around a cylinder so that it fits neatly in each end of the, of the bellows. And I just made them to the sizes that I most often use. So 200 millimeters from the sensor to the end, 144 millimeters for short focus uses, that type of thing. It's very easy to do, very quick, and it gave me an extra five, six years out of my bellows before I decided to get a new set. But that's the, the solution to light leaks. Better to prevent them. When I'm not using my bellows, I put it in a, a humidity controlled box with all of my other uh, sensitive gear. And uh, yeah, it's, it still looks like new, and uh, this is anything but new. Back when the bellows were still being manufactured, there were several attachments that you could also use with it. Uh, it had an extension bellows, an additional rod with an additional set of bellows if you wanted really long extension. It also had a slide uh, copying 
uh, stage that would slide on, and a macro copy stand, which was a fantastic gadget, uh, a little arm with a, a disc of metal with the middle cut out and a piece of frosted glass, like an old microscope stage. And uh, yeah, I can see a lot of creative possibilities with that. Another thing that they sold as, a, as a, um, an accessory for this is a device very similar to, to this, which is a uh, right angle viewer. This is a newer version. This is the DR6, which works with a lot of Nikon's uh, square viewfinder cameras. Unfortunately, this does not work with the round viewfinder on, uh, on, on my main camera, but uh, this is still handy to have when you're doing macro on the bellows and you, you aren't tethered. All of the pre-digital cameras that Nikon made and everybody made actually, the shutter release button had a small hole in it uh, with a screw thread. That was made for putting a cable release, shutter release in there so that you could uh, remotely fire the shutter without touching the camera. I'm going to be showing you in just a second one of the features uh, of the bellows that we haven't talked about before, uh, but it also requires activation with a, uh, a, a shutter release cable. But Nikon used to make two of these things, the AR4 and the AR7, uh, which were for different camera models. But these nifty things uh, were a, a single plunger with two cable releases attached, one for the bellows and one for your camera on the other end, so that with a plunge of a button, it would take the, the photograph as well as open up your aperture to the size that, that you wanted for the shot. So very clever. Let me take one minute briefly to tell you about a real treasure trove of a site. There's a guy named Mr. Butkus, uh, unfortunate name, uh, lives in New Jersey, and uh, he has a website that is worth checking out. It's called cameramanuals.org. And uh, on that site, you can find manuals for just about everything. And the PB6, as, long, as well as the PB4 and the PB5, have a full manual for you to read there. And it's an absolute treasure, because not only does it give you pencil drawings and photographs of all of the adapters that I'm talking about, it also gives you really detailed instructions for using all the different features of the bellows. So it's a really handy document. The last several pages of it is a treasure trove of information about magnification ratios and bellows. I strongly urge you uh, to check that out. If you've ever had any questions about, well, what if I use a reverse 35 millimeter on the bellows at 174 millimeters of extension, this booklet, this manual that's available at the, the website I just told you about will have that information. It'll tell you exactly what your reproduction ratio will be. Absolutely fascinating. If you do go over there, you can look at these things for free, uh, but there's also a, a button that you can press to donate, I think it's two or three dollars uh, to, to help Mr. Butkus keep this thing running. So uh, I urge you also, when you go over there, to drop a couple of bucks in his, uh, in his kitty there so he can keep doing what he's doing. So when Nikon designed this bellows, it was for a lot of different purposes, but Primarily, it was for use with short focal length prime lenses. The reason being that the shorter the focal length of the lens, the more magnification you're going to get out of it. And once you get above about 50 millimeters, it's hardly worth putting on the stand. Not strictly true, but you get the point. Of all of the lenses that were contemporaneous with the release of this thing, this one, the 50 millimeter uh, f1.8 D lens, uh, was probably the, the lens they had in mind when they made the thing. If you're using one of these D style lenses that has the aperture ring on it, when the aperture ring is not locked, I'm able to change the aperture manually. So how do we change the aperture on a lens that is not a manual aperture lens? Well, it's surprisingly straightforward. So the lens I'm gonna demonstrate this with is a, a really excellent lens, one of my 
actual favorite lenses right now is uh, it's one of the new ones by Tamron, the SP 45 millimeter full frame coverage lens. This is a lovely lens, incredibly sharp. So let's say we, we decide we want to use this lens on the bellows and it would make a good bellows lens. So we will put it on in the usual way. And then when it came time to adjust our aperture, there's no way to do it. So the way things are, we're shooting wide open and uh, that's not going to do. You're going to need to have uh, the, the aperture closed down. Now, don't be confused if you've seen me in the past take a 50 millimeter lens and jam a little bit of plastic down in there to hold the actuator open at a certain aperture. That's not what we do in this case. There's a much more elegant solution than that. And it involves using a very simple cable release. And it doesn't matter what cable release you have. They're basically all the same. And you can get these on eBay for a couple of dollars. You can get them uh, a Nikon version, the original double cable release. I'm sure costs 30 or $40 these days. But you can pick up any simple cable release. It has a little metal pin in it that when you push the plunger, the pin comes out. Now, if you are buying one of these that you find in surplus, make sure that it still has the little screw uh, lock at the top. This is important. So all you have to do to control the aperture of your G lens or, or uh, your uh, third party lens, whatever you happen to have, is just screw the cable release as you would into a camera into the top of the bellows, the little silver bump with the red line around it. And now all you have to do is depress the plunger and it will close the aperture to the extent that you need it closed. I'm then asked, okay, that makes sense, but how do you, how do you set your aperture to f5.6? Put the lens on your camera, set the aperture to 5.6 and look at it. You can even take a picture of it with your phone. So all you have to do with this attached is press the plunger until you get the aperture you want. And then while holding it in position, tighten the little lock and it'll hold it in that position while you take your pictures. Now, a lot of people want to know what are these little buttons doing at the top here? They appear to be connected, but they, they operate independently but they appear to share the same locking mechanism. Well, what these are are basically the, the preview button on your bellows, just like on your modern camera. In other words, while you're, you're composing your shot, your aperture is wide open. But if you want to, to see what you're gonna get when you take the photograph, you could close down the aperture to wherever you wanted it and get that preview. When you release it, it returns to, to wide open again. If you want to keep the aperture closed down, all you have to do is, is move both of the buttons and push them in and they will lock, leaving you with your aperture at about f22. So that's a great feature that does make any lens you have a suitable lens to use with the bellows, literally. And it doesn't matter whether it's a Nikon lens, just like with the camera, any lens that will adapt to an F mount can be used. And uh, so long as you've got a drawer full of adapters like I do, it's no problem. So the next thing I wanna show you probably is the closest thing there is to a riddle of the bellows. Um, there is a feature that I don't use very much. There's a rumor that uh, Nikon didn't want anybody to know about this feature, though I can't imagine why that would be the case. Uh, and uh, I've heard from many different sources that Nikon didn't put anything about this in their manual. Well, uh, go over to that cameramanuals.org I sent you to, and you'll see that it's right there on the third page, describes what I'm getting ready to show you. Uh, but this device was created with the intent uh, that it be used for macro photography, among other things. Uh, so. Obviously, reversing lenses was something that they were planning for us to do. A feature was built in that uh, is really um, interesting. It's not, for me, particularly useful, 
I'll let you be the judge of that when you see it. But over on the, the right side of the front standard, there's a little screw that if you turn it counterclockwise, the bellow part of the bellows disconnects from the standard. Be really careful. When holes appear in bellows, it's during uh, maneuvers like this. Now, if I take the disc off the front, this disc is not just cosmetic, it actually locks things onto the rail. But now I can slide the rail all the way off and I can turn the standard backwards. Now, with it backwards, when I mount my lens on it, the same exact lens, the, the 50 millimeter f1.8 D, when I, when I mount it in reverse and make sure the aperture arm is locked, this is no different than it was a few minutes ago when the thing was turned around. The lens was pointing forward, now it's pointing back. And this will answer the question that you've probably never asked yourself is why does the 50 millimeter lens have a ring at the end of it that doesn't appear to do anything? Uh, well, it does do something. It does this. The, uh, the little metal plate that the bellows attached to slides right onto that ring that comes out the front of the lens. And there's a little collar inside it that you tighten with the little thumb screw and it'll grip on to the, the uh, defect, the round defect in the, the bellows. And now you have a reversed 50 millimeter lens with full aperture control, ready to go. All you need is a camera on the other end and now you can control the aperture of your reversed lens attached to the bellows. So you've probably already seen the reason that this would not be my first go-to solution to have the lens inside like this. And the reason for that is simply because there's no room at the front where the lens is for me to get light on my subject. And that's the, that's the main issue for me, is with the lens reversed like this, my subject's gonna be very close to the lens and this big chunk of metal is getting between me and the specimen where I want to light it. It makes much more sense to me for the lens to be attached in the other direction and then reversed using a, a regular reversing ring from Nikon BR2. So this way, with the lens forward or backwards, it doesn't matter if I reverse it, it will be backwards, but I have just bought about two inches of extra room underneath the lens to allow me to get light up onto my subject. That's the only reason I don't use it. That and the fact that it's a little bit fidgety. Now, I got a question just recently about using a different lens, it was actually a Tamron, and I think it was a 35 millimeter prime. Somebody knew about this reversing feature and wanted to use their 35 millimeter in reverse on the bellows, which is a really good idea. That would be an excellent setup. Um, but I was concerned about the shape of the lens and the size of the lens and connecting it in the, uh, using the method I just showed you. So I'm gonna show you a way to get around that. If you have some fantastic lens that you love to use, that you think would be good, used in reverse on a bellows and you want to do it the old fashioned way, I'll show you how to do it. So the lens you attach to the standard in the usual way, except you put the standard on backwards, like so. By the way, if you have a lens on this thing, I strongly recommend you get in the habit of screwing the disc back in right away. Because if you leave one of the locking mechanisms unlocked and then tip the thing up for any reason, your lens will have a tumble. Now the question obviously in this situation becomes, well, how in the world can you attach this little 55 millimeter defect on the bellows to this enormous lens? Well, it's really quite simple. You just take a, uh, 
a couple of um, sizing rings. Natively, this particular lens has uh, a filter ring of 67 millimeters. So I put a 67 to 62, then a 62 to 65, and then a 55 to 52, all step down rings. And I just attach them to the front of the lens like so. And, and obviously I'm showing you this to suggest that it doesn't really matter what lens you have. So long as you've got a set of step up and step down rings, you'll find a way to get it to work. Now, what you can immediately see is that at 52 millimeters, it doesn't fit. So the idea is you keep adding step rings until you find one that fits snugly into the, into the holder. And I'll show you that in more, well, I'll show it to you now while I've got it out. This is a, um, this is a 52 to 43, 52 to 43 step down ring but it happens to have a 57 millimeter outer diameter. And that happens to also be the exact size. Not only does, does it fit, it fits without any wiggle at all. So that when you, when you put the lens on and tighten the screw, it holds it tight, which is what you need. So I'll take that off. I'll add it to the rings. Now you, you may look at this and think, is that not gonna vignette? N uh, no, it won't. Then it's just a matter of putting the bellows back on, tightening the little thumb screw, and there you go. And that's all there is to it. So basically any lens that you have that you think would work, which it really is, in my opinion, anything from about 24 to 50. Uh, maybe 60. There's not much point going higher. And if you go lower, there's so much distortion, uh, the, the images are going to be uh, useless. So anything in that, in that short normal range, so uh, this is perfect at 45, is uh, easy to reverse. It's easy to adapt so that the bellows will fit to it. And uh, this is an incredibly useful setup. This is actually a great rig for this and don't forget to get your cable release so that you can also control your aperture like so. I have written and I have said in words that the Nikon PB6 bellows is the best macro bellows you can buy and uh, I stand by that. There are less expensive bellows than the PB6 on the market. You can buy a set of bellows from uh, Photo Diox for $39. I'm not gonna say another word about that. You can also buy a set of Novaflex bellows that have a tilt capacity on the front of the, of the device, but otherwise is pretty much the same basic bellows for $1,250. And that may be a fairly good bellows, I don't know. I'll probably never see a, a set of bellows that cost that much. If this is the, the best set of bellows in the world, uh, how much do they cost? And right now, the price on the, the world market for these things used, and there's always a brisk market uh, for, for bellows, they go for $199, $220, something like that. You can buy new bellows from some dealers in Japan who must have bought a whole warehouse full of them. You can still buy the attachments that I was talking about, brand new in a box from some of the Japanese dealerships. And the prices on those is all over the place. Uh, I saw one set that consisted of the bellows plus the extension bellows plus every adapter and every part that they made to go with this. And it was like $500 but that's a way outlier on the high side. Uh, so it really is an insanely good bargain. If you decide you want a set of these things yourself, go over to eBay. There'll be pages and pages of these uh, uh, bellows available. Just make sure you get one that's in mint condition and be able to send it back if it's not. If you do buy one of these, make sure you check everything 
when you get it. Make sure that the, the camera mount rotates smoothly. This is really important for attaching your camera. This ring has to go through 90 degrees and lock. Make sure that with a cable release in place, that your aperture actually is being actuated. Uh, yeah, make sure there aren't any holes in the, in the bellows as well. That's pretty easy to do by shining a light in in a dark room and looking for light coming out. Uh, but that's about it. It's a sturdy piece of equipment. Uh, if you're careful with it, it'll last you the rest of your life. And I guarantee you, it is the single most flexible piece of macro gear I own. The only time I don't use it is when I go outside, and that's just because it's bulky and I'll break it. So if you have any questions left over after all of that bellows talk, let me know and I will make sure they get addressed one way or the other. And I'll see you again in a few short days where I have another short video coming up on uh, sensor size, which I think you'll find interesting. Until then, take care, be safe.